video I'm going to talk about glycolysis and neoglucogenesis. Glycolysis is the first step towards the glucose utilization for energy. So glycolysis takes place in all living cells like uh, it's a mammalian cell or it's a plant cell or it, a bacteria everywhere glycolysis is the first step towards energy uh, the energy production. So the substrate for glycolysis is glucose and glucose is converted by 10 step enzymatic pathway to pyruvate and later that pyruvate is utilized in the mitochondria for further energy utilization. However, we will study how glucose is converted to pyruvate step by step and glycolysis is very important pathway because cancer cell use mainly glycolysis as their energy pur for their energy purpose. They doesn't use mitochondria to yield energy. So let's go step by step. So the first substrate is glucose and it's important to note that the all the enzymatic reactions for this metabolic pathway that means the glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of a cell. So the first reaction is glucose converted to glucose 6-phosphate. As you can see it's a ring structure of glucose and the hexokinase enzyme as its kinase it transfers a phosphate group from ATP to this 6 position and it uh, simultaneously ATP get converted into ADP. So the second step is glucose 6-phosphate get converted to fructose 6-phosphate. So this is the isomerization reaction because glucose and fructose they are isomer of each other. So this is the keto isomer, this is the aldose isomer. So and this enzyme must be an isomerase. So this enzyme is phosphofructose isomerase and as you can see from the structure the structure just isomerized but the carbon number remain the same. Again what happened fructose 6-phosphate it's getting converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Remember here again another phosphate is added to the substrate and again the enzyme is another kinase here phosphofructokinase with the help of this enzyme uh, ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and the phosphate group is added towards one first position of the glucose and after that aldolase breaks this six carbon product into two three carbon sugars one is aldose and another is ketose first aldose is named as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this is the structure of the glyceraldehyde. In the third position, you can see there is a phosphate group attached, and also it's converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. It, it is a structure of the dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Two phosphates are there, and these two uh, sugars they are interconvertible by isomerase enzyme. So, from this glyceraldehyde three phosphate another very important enzyme that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase or popularly known as GAP-TH it will convert glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate into 1,3-phosphoglycerate and in this step NAD is converted to NADH and this step is very important because the NADH produced in this step would be later utilized in the electron transport chain to produce further ATP and the next step 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate here you can see the structure would be converted here is two phosphate group and first one carbon and then third carbon and this is going to convert it into 3-phosphoglycerate and this uh, uh, step is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase and this kinase enzyme is a little bit different. It doesn't take phosphate group from the ATP. Instead, it takes the phosphate group from the substrate and it's give to ATP. So in this step, ATP is produced from ADP. So this step is called substrate level phosphorylation. This step is called substrate level phosphorylation because the from the substrate this kinase enzyme takes phosphate and phosphorylates 
ADP into ATP. So it's taking up phosphate from this substrate and putting it into ADP to form ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate. And this step yields ATP. So this step is crucially important. And this enzyme, this phosphoglycerate kinase, is very important enzyme. However, when phosphoglycerate kinase convert it into 3-phosphoglycerate, it gets further converted to 2-phosphoglycerate, then again converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. After phosphoenol pyruvate, another important enzyme, pyruvate kinase, it converts phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. And in again in this step, substrate level phosphorylation takes place. As earlier I have said that substrate level phosphorylation is the method by which ATP is generated in the glycolysis. So you can see again ATP is generated. That means pyruvate kinase enzyme took phosphate from this substrate and phosphorylated ADP to get ATP. And this pyruvate would be later transferred into the mitochondria for further processing by the Krebs cycle. So in this whole reaction, there are two steps where we need ATP for the energy source. For the fuel this reaction, for fueling this reaction, ATP is initially required. So two molecules of ATP is required at first, but in the payoff phase, actually there are four molecules of ATP is produced. And as earlier I have said, two molecules of ATP is utilized earlier. So net gain of ATP in this reaction is uh, 4 minus 2 equal to 2 ATP. Remember the NADH produced here would not yield ATP direct here. This NADH will enter mitochondria and in the electron transport chain this NADH will produce ATP. Okay, so next we are going to talk about neoglucogenesis. <coughs> neoglucogenesis is just reversal of uh, glycolysis but not exact reversal there are three steps which are different from glycolysis as you can see if we can draw a schematic from glucose to a 10 step process to pyruvate then the neoglucogenesis would go from pyruvate to glucose but there are three steps one two and three in these three steps the reaction is not exactly reverse because these three steps are unidirectional means these steps are not reversible that is why separate enzymes are required to bypass this step and to produce glucose from pyruvate now what happens pyruvate entered the mitochondria after glycolysis here you can see pyruvate has entered the mitochondria so when uh, glucose level is low or somehow body needs glucose new glucogenesis will take place and for new glucogenesis pyruvate carboxylase is the crucial enzyme so pyruvate carboxylase as the name suggests carboxylase it will add a carboxyl group and it will uh, just put uh, a carboxyl group into the pyruvate and it will co convert it into the oxaloacetic acid. Remember this, this is a 3 carbon, but oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate, it's 4 carbon. So it's a step up reaction and this pyruvate carboxylase actually facilitated the step up reaction in pyruvate carboxylase. It's a mitochondrial enzyme, it requires biotin for carboxylation and this oxaloacetic acid, it gets out again into the cytoplasm and get converted by carboxykinase to phosphoenol pyruvate and from phosphoenol pyruvate these steps are reversible these steps are reversible so it can go up to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate but it cannot get converted to fructose 6 phosphate in the straight manner because the step catalyzed by phosphofructokinase it's not reversible reaction in this step is not reversible that is why there is a bypass uh, of this step is uh, done by fructose 1 6 bis phosphatase it's a phosphatase enzyme so it will remove the phosphate from this fructose 1 6 bis phosphate and it will convert it into fructose 6 phosphate 
again the step from glucose 6 phosphate to glucose it's not reversible so we need a different bypass route for conversion of glucose 6 phosphate into glucose and that is catalyzed by glucose 6 phosphatase again it's a phosphatase enzyme so it will cleave phosphate and yield glucose so why we need gluconeogenesis suppose our uh, body glucose level is low and we need to make glucose from other sources so what could be other sources for glucose like in the muscle lactate is produced due to anaerobic respiration this lactate could be converted into pyruvate and that pyruvate could be further converted into glucose or otherwise many glucogenic amino acid which ultimately leads glucogenic amino acids like an alanine which ultimately get converted to pyruvate will also lead to formation of glucose from uh, this pyruvate and this process is known as neoglucogenesis so our body maintains an exact balance between gluconeogenesis and uh, glycolysis so uh, insulin is a hormone which prevents gluconeogenesis but other hormones like glucagon it help in gluconeogenesis and let's conclude the video hope you liked it comment subscribe and bye